Hey, everybody. Welcome back to today's show, episode 2906 of the Cabral Concept. This is the weekend edition of the show where we answer your questions. Each and every weekend, we get to about 10 or 12 of our community's questions. Always excited to do so. And if you want to follow along with the questions, head on over to stephencabral.com slash 2906. Let's dive into the show, all things wellness, weight Weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, longevity, health span, lifespan, you name it, let's get started. First question today is from Stacy. Stacy says, for about three months now, my throat feels like someone's foot is on my neck. Every time I eat or drink anything, even water causes this sensation. It started first with a feeling of nasal congestion when I ate lying down. But now for over one month, I was congested and took many over-the-counter drugs and nothing helped. I went to an ENT and now the symptoms are much better. However, my throat and head flared up and sometimes my ears feel congested. I have some regurgitation, but very little to no mucus. I don't think it's what I'm eating since I've been on an anti-inflammatory diet since September 1st. The sensation starts when I feel hungry or I after I eat or drink. I tried the Protonix, uh, Omeprazole, and H2 blockers, was on it for about six weeks, and felt even more pressure in my head. Okay, so the only line that confuses me, Stacey, is it says, I went to an ENT, and now symptoms are much better. But it doesn't tell me what you did, since they probably gave you the Protonix, the Omeprazole, the H2 blockers, and it said that the pressure was worse. So without understanding kind of what allowed you to feel a little bit better. Let's dive in and help you from a natural health perspective. Okay. So again, I can't give you a medical diagnosis, medical treatment plan, medical cure, or any medical advice of any kind. But what I can do is just draw on 20 plus years of private practice and share with you what I've seen in these particular conditions. So sometimes, and I've talked about this previous on the show, and I would definitely recommend looking it up at stephencabral.com slash podcasts and type in achalasia. And that's with an ACH to start. Okay. So achalasia is oftentimes due to stress. And it is this feeling of not being able to swallow or get the food down. If that sounds like you with some regurgitation or choking, I would check, I would check out those shows. I have recommendations for lab testing. And I also have recommendations on how to actually complete a protocol to get rid of the achalasia, all right? But let's say maybe it's not achalasia. Let's go on to your question. Maybe, maybe this actually has to do with the new anti-inflammatory diet you went on. Now remember, I'm not saying that an anti-inflammatory diet isn't fantastic, because I believe it is. But what if some of the foods that you were eating on your new anti-inflammatory diet are actually causing some either inflammation in the throat and stomach or Maybe it's even causing a little bit of um, inflammation in the ear, nose, and throat. It's possible, right? So I want you to check out another show I did called The Rotation Diet. The Rotation Diet will actually share with you how to create a very simple three-day meal plan that you're just going to rotate every three days. And you'll see if one meal is causing more congestion or inflammation or that feeling of pressure on your neck after you eat. Okay. Another one would be, is it only, because I know you wrote typically uh, when you feel hungry or after I eat or drink? That kind of seems like almost all the time, right? So I'd have to get a better sense of when is this actually happening? Is it happening when you first wake up? No? Okay. What if you don't eat until, let's just say lunch? I'm not saying you should do that every day, but like, let's just see, would it ever start? Or does it start around 10 a.m. maybe when you start to get hungry? So then I'd be looking at, okay, is there some type of silent reflux, which is basically acid reflux, but they put you on acid blockers or H2 blockers to try to help with that. Does that not help? Okay, that's interesting. So all we do is we work the variables until we help you begin to heal. So my highest recommendation is if possible, run the big five. We'll look for gut issues, We'll look for inflammation. We'll look for food sensitivities. We will look at high levels of cortisol and stress and much more. So I'm kind of sending you in a bunch of different directions. There's actually not that many things it could be. There's really only like seven to eight, seven to eight total in your particular um, situation, but something changed over three months ago. And you started an anti-inflammatory diet about three months ago. I just want to know, even though they're healthier foods and maybe healthy foods in general, healthy foods can be sensitivities. Is there something you're doing that's causing this as well? Obviously not on purpose. And I would begin to look into that. All right, Stacey. 
All right, Marsh is up next. Hi, Dr. Rawl, could you please talk about what material of clothing is non-toxic and safest to wear? And would it be possible to list the worst offenders? That way I'll know which materials to absolutely avoid. Also, do you have any favorite non-toxic brands? Thank you so much, big fan of your content. Your book, The Rain Barrel Effect, should be required reading for everyone. It was such an eye-opener for me. Oh, thank you, Marsha. I appreciate that. A little plug there for the book, Rain Barrel Effect. All right, let's go. Let's get into your question, though. All right, so this is super interesting. Um, you wrote in, today is January 20th. I created a podcast without even knowing that you wrote about this this Tuesday. Because I, I don't look at any of my Ask Cabral questions until literally I go to answer them, until I open it up. I did a podcast which I haven't done before, to my knowledge, the top toxic clothing materials to, to avoid, or fabrics to avoid. That was episode 2902, literally five days ago. You can't make these things up. That's impressive. Okay, so I just recorded it just a couple days ago. All right, this is interesting. So yeah, I, I mean, I would love to, you to listen to obviously the whole show because I go in depth, but the worst ones just from memory are polyester, nylon, rayon, acrylic, and acetate. I believe that's five. That's what I named. So they're not just bad for you because of the off-gassing. They're bad for the planet. They're, they Most of them don't even break down in the environment. Like they just go to landfills and just stay there forever. And if they burn, they're super toxic. Um, now, again, most of us have some of those clothes. I'm not going to say that I don't have some t-shirts with polyester or tri-poly blends, and I do. There's no doubt about it. So if you have some of those t-shirts and you still like them, well, here's the thing. Wear them as long as humanly possible. They do hold up for a long time, but wash them at least a couple times in order to get rid of some of that off-gassing uh, that could be uh, potentially harmful for you. The other thing is make sure you stay away from non-wrinkle, uh, waterproof, all like the fancy things they're adding to clothes. Those things really don't wash out. And those are very toxic against your skin. So if you wear them, try to wear another layer under them if if you have to, okay? All right, now, so what are some of the best? Well, I can't give you any specific brands like off the top of my head. However, look for organic cotton, look for organic bamboo. Both of those are typically sustainable. And uh, look for... What else? Hemp, flax, linen, all of those can be truly great. So, Marsha, hopefully that's helpful. And then definitely check out episode 2902, stephencabral.com slash 2902. All right, Katie's up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I recently have come off the anti-anxiety pill Effexor. Uh, let's see. Been taking it for about three months. I'm finding I cannot wake up in the morning for the life of me. I set 12 alarms and still cannot get up, and it's really messing with my life. I've never felt refreshed when I finally do end up waking up. I didn't have this issue while being on that pill and I'm really struggling. Thanks for your help. Okay. So struggle feeling refreshed. And when you finally do end up waking up, okay. I didn't have this issue while being on that pill and I'm really struggling. Thanks for your help. All right. Let's see what else. Been off of it for about three months. Can't wake up in the morning. Okay. So I don't know if this was an issue pre- anti-anxiety pill or just post because it does happen sometimes just post and it's not just anxiety pills it's sometimes antidepressants and what happens is they change not always can I'm not saying always they can they can change may change the feedback loop in what's called the HPA axis of the body it has to do with the nervous system and the endocrine system, okay? So the neuroendocrine system, that's all that means. So what happens is inside of your brain, you've got these master glands, the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. Now think of the hypothalamus as the like foreman on the job giving out all the orders, right? That's the hypothalamus. The pituitary gland then goes to work sending out the signals, right? So kind of like the signal keeper to all the organs in your body to then do the work. And then we'll consider like the workers, like, you know, making things happen. Well, in this case, the hypothalamus tells the pituitary gland to send signals to the adrenals 
to produce something. Well, there's, it produces actually more than just two hormones, but one of them mainly a neurotransmitter called norepinephrine that gets the heart rate going, that moves you into not, not always bad fight or flight, but moves you to wake up for the day. And then there's the other hormone called cortisol. And cortisol begins then to shut down melatonin. So you actually start like, oh, I'm awake. I'm not feeling like a walking zombie like I used to feel like for basically my entire uh, young adulthood from 17 years old to 27 years old. I had Addison's disease. It's the inability to produce cortisol. That's a real breakdown of the HPA axis. And I had primary Addison's disease. I no longer have that. I no longer have autoimmune issues like rheumatoid arthritis. I no longer have type 2 diabetes. I no longer have POTS, I no longer have insomnia, I no longer have allergies, I no longer have any of those things. Didn't happen overnight, but I fixed all of them, of course, with the help of great mentors and a whole lot of, uh, of study. You know, but this is, again, back in the late 90s, mid to late 90s and, and early 2000s, when we didn't have access to all this you know, just brilliant information. And, and really, it was the start of functional medicine and integrative health back then at scale. I know it was always around, but at scale. Okay. So all this to say that I, we want to help you. It's not, I can't, again, I can't give the medical diagnosis. Most likely you are not producing enough cortisol in the morning. But like most likely I can help you with that. Our team can help you with that. An integrative health practitioner level two can help you with that. So you can work with whoever you want, but run the stress mood and metabolism test. Like that's what I want you to run. I would love you to run the whole big five, but honestly, if you can only run one, Run the stress mood and metabolism test. Seriously, if you want to save your money, totally fine. That's great. My job is not to get people to purchase anything. It's like, you need answers. You, I mean, you really do. It's, you say it's messing up your life. Let's run the stress mood and metabolism test. That's my recommendation. Run it with a local naturopathic doctor that specializes in the neuroendocrine system or an integrative health practitioner level two. That's what I recommend. We'll find your answers. And that's how we'll help you get well. All right? All right, Aaron's up next. Daily nutritional support question, DNS. I use this every morning as my breakfast. I've struggled over the years, specifically more in the fall, and I know it's the environmental allergies in my area this time of year. Struggling with high heart rate at night, extremely bloated stomach and gassy, and overall just feeling awful in the middle of the night. I ran out of my protein powder over the last week, and this went away. As soon as it started again, back, the symptoms came. I've tested this multiple times now to confirm, is this the B vitamins? What's happening here? It's driving me crazy. I'm desperate to figure out what is going on. Oh, this is very interesting. Okay, happy to help. You know, again, we, so hundreds of thousands of people use the daily nutritional support. Like that's just all over the world. Shipped to 27 countries all over the world. But yeah, I mean, sometimes there's issues. There's not like there's issues with literally everything. So totally get it. All right, so this is interesting. This goes back to the rain barrel effect. You're more okay with the product most of the year, except for the fall. It gets worse in the fall. Interesting, right? So the rain barrel begins to fill up. It's already filled up like, let's say three fourths of the way. There's gut issues, which I'm gonna explain in a moment. You take the DNS, it doesn't agree with you. We don't know what it is. We'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. And then you've got falling leaves and mold and all sorts of things in the fall. And then your rain barrel overflows and you feel really terrible with your accelerated heart rate, your bloating, et cetera. Okay, get it. So here's what we wanna do. You come off the daily nutritional support. How do you know if it's the pea protein in it or how do you know if it's just the methylated B vitamins or something else? Here's how you can do it. You can take any breakfast you want in the world that typically works fine for you. Let's say you wake up in the morning, you say, you know what? I'm just gonna have a bowl of oatmeal. I'm not saying it's the best thing in the world, I'm not saying it's the worst thing in the world. You have the bowl of oatmeal, how do you feel? If you feel fine, great. Just have the bowl of oatmeal for a week or so. That's that we're just, you know, it's gonna be your whole life. Let's just we're using this as a variable. Again, this is how we help people heal. So then we're gonna use the daily activated multivitamin. It's the same exact formula as the daily nutritional support, but not the um, not the flax, not the psyllium, not the pea protein in it. Okay, so none of the powder-based things. So if you take two of the daily nutritional, sorry, two of the daily activated multi in the morning and two of the daily activated multi with dinner, that's how you take them for a day, um, and you don't get any of the issues that you're currently having now, you can say, oh, it's the pea protein with maybe some of the, the flax or the organic psyllium in there. Okay. So now you can still do a smoothie in the morning. You take your daily activated multi and you use whatever your favorite protein powder is 
And that's how you make your own daily nutritional support with the daily activated multi and then you use your favorite protein. All right. So if you still want to go plant based, obviously, you know that the pea protein won't work for you, but you can go with a different formula. All right. So hopefully that's helpful. And, and that's how you'll know. All right. All right. And then if you ever want to test just the B vitamins, we have a product called Activated B Complex, and you can test that alone. That's all your methylated B vitamins that are really great for people with MTHFR gene issues, et cetera. All right, let's get to, oh, that is our time for today. Oh, I went long-winded. All right, so usually I don't go as long-winded per question, but again, I, I've taken polls. If you want me to do longer podcasts, I'm happy to do so, but my goal with the Cabral concept is to do 15-minute shows maximum every day so that you can tune in every day and learn a little bit more about your health. And of course, you'll then have more information yourself. You'll be able to share more with others. Take care, everybody. I'll be back tomorrow answering more of our community's questions. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.